This video is brought to you in association with Qualcomm Snapdragon. This summer, come on, you beast! A dragon is coming. No, a smaller dragon. But fast and cute, but not that cute. A multitasking dragon that doesn't waste power. And he's not coming to a theater. No, he's coming to your phone. Well, technically, in your phone. Make sure your next phone has blockbuster speed and battery life you love. Make sure it has a Snapdragon processor. Hi everyone, here's Rubutani from PhoneArena.com bringing you the video review of the Sony Xperia Z1. Sony's mission to combine assets from across the company and to create a flagship device have not gone unnoticed. From the Xperia Z to the Xperia Z Ultra and now the Z1, we've seen a growing consolidation of buzzwords and technology features from across Sony's product portfolio in a bid to create a hero product. Will Sony be able to finish what they started and create a device worthy of flagship status? Let's find out. The Sony Xperia Z1 looks reminiscent of the Xperia Z. The phone is essentially a glass slab with an aluminium rim around the sides. The glass and aluminium meld into each other to create a design that is positively stunning. The inky blackness further lends credits to the understated but elegant design. Over at the top, above the 5-inch screen, you'll spot a front-facing camera on the right and Sony branding in the middle. Surrounding the screen is a surprisingly wide bezel. Weighing in at 170 grams, the handset is on the heavier side. The perfectly symmetric design looks great but doesn't sit too well in the hand, with the footprint being larger than phones like the LG G2, which have an even larger screen. The left side of the handset sports the magnetic dock connector. The micro SD and micro USB ports are hidden under flaps. This is essential because of the waterproof nature of the phone. The handset can be used for up to 30 minutes under 1 meter of water. Moving over to the right side of the phone, you can see the micro SIM card slot hidden under yet another flap. Below it is a power button. The volume rocker is below this and so is the two-stage camera key. As you can notice, the right side of the phone is quite busy in terms of buttons placed on the phone. The two-stage camera key is a more than welcome addition and the resounding click that you get on snapping the buttons feels great. That said, we do wish that the button was a bit more pronounced as the shallow depth makes it a bit hard to press when using the phone single-handed. The top of the phone is where the 3.5mm audio jack is located. Unlike the Xperia Z, the headphone jack is no longer hidden under a flap. The bottom of the phone is similarly clean with a fairly large speaker grille and a keyhole to install a wrist strap. It has to be said that despite the really large speaker grille, the volume output from the Xperia Z is quite disappointing. The Sony logo is placed centrally over at the back. It's a very clean and beautiful design, though it tends to lean towards the side of being a bit boring. A bigger caveat of the glass construction is the accompanying micro scratches that appear very early in the phone's life. We saw a large amount of scratches that show up even on delicate usage. Moving on to the software on the phone, there's not much changed here. The Xperia Z1 is a bit behind the curve with Android 4.2.2 on board and Sony's interface layer, while pretty, doesn't add too much worth talking about. The interface is exactly the same as what you've seen on the Xperia Z Ultra. The lock screen can now be swiped up or down to unlock. Right swiping from the date toggles the camera app while the left lets you adjust other options like the music player, which pops up here contextually. The home screen too is a very vanilla affair and opts for the standard icons and widgets formula. It doesn't have any interesting UI tweaks like blink feed that can be seen on Sense 5.5 running on HTC handsets. Sony has replaced the quick launcher built into the drop-down in Android 4.2 with its own implementation of quick toggles. The home screen can of course be swiped around and you can even replace the default app shortcuts, widgets, wallpapers and themes. It is possible to launch small apps like the calendar straight from the multitasking menu and these hover above your content. Overall, the software delivers but doesn't have too much to set it apart from the competition. Let's talk about the display on the Xperia Z1. First seen on the Z Ultra, Sony's triluminous display technology is also present here. Unlike the Z Ultra, the improvements brought on by the triluminous technology aren't very visible. The color gamut, while wider than that on the Xperia Z, is still lacking behind the HTC One, and the screen on the Note 3 most definitely puts it to shame. The Full HD 5-inch display has a nice crispy pixel density that amounts to 441 ppi. The Xperia Z1's display looks quite alright when looked at head-on, but the poor viewing angles are very apparent once you turn the device to a side. Outdoor visibility isn't very great either. Under the hood of the phone is a Snapdragon 800 processor clocked at 2.2GHz. There's 2GB of RAM on board and the performance is as good as it gets. One of the most prominent aspects of the Xperia Z1 is its camera module. The sensor is of the Exmor RS variety and is fairly large at 1 by 2.3 inches. The sensor is paired with an f by 2.0 G lens and Bion's image processing adapted from the Cybershot range of cameras. Images are generally very good though slightly oversaturated. 
low light shots aren't all that great and the inclusion of optical image stabilization would have definitely helped the Z1. Connectivity options on the handset range from 3G HSPA Plus to Wi-Fi 802.11 A, B, G, N and AC. Wi-Fi Direct DLNA support is also built in. The phone supports Bluetooth 4.0. GPS, GLONASS and NFC is also built in. The Z1 comes with 16GB of built-in storage which has about 12GB free and this can be expanded via the easily accessible microSD card slot. There's a 3000mAh battery unit built into the Z1 and battery life is generally very good. We could easily get a full day of usage out of it. The Xperia Z1 is clearly the best of Sony but we're not entirely sure if it's the best device out there. The beautiful glass and aluminum shell of the device is just a bit too prone to scratches. The screen, also while an improvement over the handset it replaces, is still not as good as the competition. The Sony Xperia Z1 is certainly unique in being the only top-end device that is both waterproof and dustproof. The camera is also right there with the best, though the lack of optical image stabilization does prove to be a negative. The Sony Xperia Z1 is one of the best devices out there for gaming with the 5-inch Full HD display and the Snapdragon 800 system on chip. Other than the heating issues in some games that we noticed, all the games run very smoothly with high graphics on the phone. We think that the Z1 is a solid flagship device that is a fairly significant leap over the device that it replaces. The Xperia Z1 is available for Rs 42,999. If you enjoyed our video, please do hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.